This CM Punk pipe bomb was so wild, even WWE acknowledged it. The WWE official Adam Pearce has gotten carried away. He's aired the dirty laundry, laundry publicly, hence the reason this investigation was taken behind the scenes with Ronda. I'm not going to sit back and take this f***ing shit. I believe this is only the third time WWE talked about AEW. For AEW, it's a weekly thing. So before any of you say, Oh my god, how dare you? You should focus on yourself! Okay, Mark. Uh, so why AEW can mention the WWE, but WWE can't? Uh, it's different. How? It just, just, it just is? Okay, I'm asking you how. You wanna talk about Sasha or what? I personally live for this. I want wrestling to be exactly like this. WWE roasting AEW, AEW roasting WWE. When it comes to AEW, maybe it's a bit too much. And now it kinda lost all the meaning. It doesn't even feel unusual at this point. Whatever the case may be, keep them coming. Speaking of locker rooms and all that, have you seen what Chris Jericho and Cody had to say about CM Punk back in the day? Remember this weird, uh, uh, Cody, we, we had this weird locker room meeting in WWE once where uh, CM Punk said that. Do you remember that? So I tried Do you remember not that? As the locker room leader, I'm like, you don't lead me. <laughs> and it and it worked on a certain demo of the locker room. But there was a there was one meeting where Booker T was in the room and Punk hit the, uh, as the locker room leader, I'm telling you guys all to pick up your trash. And Booker literally threw his trash on the floor. You have Booker T and Chris Jericho in the same locker room and you're like, as a locker room leader, I demand you. Man, I love CM Punk as an entertainer, but boy, he's delusional. That's why AEW's locker room has a problem with CM Punk. Apparently, he's like, you gotta stop doing this. This being whatever got these wrestlers over in the first place. My man was probably like, dinosaurs, really? Fuck out of here, man. You're not a dinosaur, you're a wrestler. You're not a dinosaur. Say what you will, man. This pipe bomb was amazing. This video is sponsored by Wrestling GM. Solo game dev challenges billion dollar corporation AEW and comes out on top. And this David vs Goliath story was only possible through a passionate and loyal fan base. As a result, Wrestling GM takes the crown for the best wrestling GM simulator on mobile. And you guys know if you want a general manager game with no limitations, Wrestling GM is the way to go. It gives you all the tools you need in general manager pick a promotion manager roster championships upgrade your product build teams factions rivalries check your show's history sign free agents and so much more and of course you got to make sure to book the best show possible as you guys know i've already played wrestling gm on my channel i had a lot of fun if you want to check the series out the link is in the description below wrestling gm is available on both ios and android devices download the game by using the link in the description sounds easy i'm the best booker in the world Oh yeah? Prove it, Mark. Download the game. Welcome back to another episode of Greatness of SmackDown. How are you guys doing today? This definitely wasn't one of the strongest Triple H's shows. I don't like the idea of the brand split not meaning anything. And I really hate not having Roman Reigns in this. This was the first Solo's main roster show and we don't have Roman Reigns. I wanted to see the full faction, but thankfully... At least we have the leader. The show kicked off in a big way with Sheamus and the Brawling Brutes versus the Imperium. So first of all, his theme song changed. Now it has the old school Imperium theme song in the beginning and then, then it cuts to Ganta. I love this song by the way. I recently watched Gunter's uh, Clash at the Castle entrance. Still gives me goosebumps, man. I, I, he's going to kill people. That's the vibe I'm getting. And Seamus has a completely different vibe as well. Nothing really changed about him, but people now finally realized Seamus is one of the goats. This was a very fun match. I'm really glad WWE are continuing the story because Seamus versus Gunta is absolutely unbelievable match of the year possibly in this match everyone got some time to shine everyone was really entertaining and we got the right call the imperium won the match it's their first match back as a faction so it only makes sense so this was a great way to open smackdown and by the way dave Meltzer gave gunta versus sheamus five stars not that it matters as much as people think but i love the acknowledgement dave Meltzer obviously has bias against the wwe so so this match was really that damn good. Then we see the bloodline. Sami Zayn gets hyped up. 
Throw those ones up. They have some serious things they want to talk about. Jay says that Roman Reigns beat Drew McIntyre on his home turf and tells McIntyre he doesn't know how deep the bloodline runs. And then they introduce Solo Sikoa. My man is all business. He says if someone comes for his family, he comes for them. Except when he didn't for the past three years. He says the bloodline just got stronger than ever before. Then we see Drew McIntyre with a steel chair. He hits Solo. He was really on his own until Sami Zayn saved the day and took the chair shot for Solo. Leadership. My man gained Solo's respect in the first segment already. So this was a nice segment, I'm just saying, you know, I really wish Roman Reigns was here because I was wondering what Roman Reigns is going to say about Solo Siko Sikoa. Sikoa. Then we saw Raquel Rodriguez and Aliyah versus Toxic Attraction in a non-title match. This didn't do much for me, but I guess Toxic Attraction are now main roster superstars. Raquel Rodriguez and Aliyah won. It's still hard to take them seriously as tag team champions, unfortunately. Then we saw the Fatal 5-Way Elimination match to determine the number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship at Extreme Rules. Ronda Rousey, Zia Lee, Lacey Evans, Sonya Deville, and Natalia. Natalia got eliminated first. Then Zia Lee, Lacey Evans, Sonya Deville, and Ronda Rousey takes the W. She's the number one contender. Man, it just felt like Ronda Rousey just went through the entire women's division. So, uh... I don't know how I feel about that. It definitely makes her look even stronger. So now it feels like Ronda is going to take that championship back. But I've heard that she doesn't even want to be a champion. I believe she knows she's going to get criticized a lot when she's a champ. You know, taking opportunities and stuff. So I honestly kind of respect that. But you need to realize Ronda Rousey is the biggest female name on SmackDown. So it only makes sense. And honestly, I want to see that match. Then we see the Bloodline backstage. Imagine walking into the locker room and seeing this you would be scared i would be scared not sammy solo says he appreciates zane help in the ring zane says anything you need i'll help so he basically suggests helping solo sikoa in a match against drew mcintyre in the main event of smackdown but the uso said no he has to prove himself it's gonna be one-on-one -on -one, no interferences but then they started arguing obviously jay doesn't love sammy zane as much sammy loves jay uso so then they changed their minds we're all gonna be here we went from a one-on-one -on -one match to a one versus all. Then we saw the maximum male models versus the Street Profits and Hit Row. So this was okay, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of multi-man tag. This gives me AEW vibes, man. One of the main reasons I stopped watching AEW back in the days because we got so many multi-man matches and it gets boring really fast. I just want some classic one-on-ones. I want triple threats. The, the last thing I want to see on a show is 8-man, 10-man, 15-man, I don't care. I'm so sick of this, honestly. The highlight of this match was the commentary. Corey Graves did an amazing job putting over Maximum Male Models. He also put over Maxine and uh, Max Dupree. I want to see how their parents look. Losing Pat McAfee sucks. Pat McAfee left for like four months, I believe. So it really shows, obviously... I already miss that energy. But Corey Graves is doing an amazing job. Uh, honestly, I want to see more Ronaldo back. Triple H is back in control. It only makes sense. Uh, by the way, just talking about more Ronaldo, I remembered JBL. So last week we saw JBL approaching uh, Baron Corbin. I really wanted to see JBL on this show. So the babyface team won. Again, the match wasn't anything bad, but I'm just already sick of these multi- It doesn't do anything for me. Then we got the Alpha Academy from Monday Night Raw for some cheap pops, which honestly wasn't that bad. Chad Gable says SmackDown is lucky to have them back. And they're here to ruin Braun Strowman's return in the same way that he ruined their tag team match on Raw. Then Chad Gable insulted their sports teams, which I get that it works but me from the outside like i'm not an american uh, not from uk for me it's really hard to relate Braun! i'm a train i'm a train so yes Braun Strowman is back he beats chad gable he beats otis up choo choo motherfucker i'm back a promo maybe we seen this on raw already who cares Braun Strowman is back and he did a couple of moves 
Let's move on. And it was time for the main event, Drew McIntyre versus Solo Sikoa. And uh, I love this. I already love the presentation. My man is giving me Rikishi and Umaga vibes. I guess mostly because of the hair and the attire and the tattoos. They're family, it makes sense. What am I talking about? But you get the idea. This man already looks like a star. So much potential. I can already see a great intercontinental championship title run in this man. I hope at one point we are going to see Solo versus Roman Reigns because... I, I can already smell a great storyline. Obviously, the Usos and Sami Zayn interfered quite a lot. But we all knew that this match is gonna end in no contest. Because it doesn't make any damn sense. Why would Drew McIntyre lose? Why would Solo lose in his first match? So we saw the Usos attacking Drew McIntyre. The Street Profits interfere. But the match continues. And I totally forgot about this. But Karrion Cross is in a rivalry against Drew McIntyre. So he attacked Drew McIntyre and put him to sleep. That was your SmackDown. An okay episode. Definitely not one of the strongest. I feel like it really lacked something. I feel like... I feel like it lacked storytelling. But again, we did get some cool moments here and there. Kind of sucks that the WWE Championship picture is really predictable now. So we gotta wait until Royal Rumble, then then WrestleMania. Uh, I need some change. I get it. I understand. I probably wouldn't change it. But at the same time, I'm already tired of Roman Reigns as the Universal Undisputed or whatever WWE Champion. If he was a champion and then we would have a different champion on Raw... Fine, but this I'm definitely tired of. So thank you for watching this video, The Great One. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.